Hello and welcome to the hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's North Side, I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 1978, Casino by Aldi Miola. This concludes our instrumental two-parter. Aldo Miola is an American guitarist best known for his work in jazz fusion and world music, and as a former member of the legendary fusion band Return to Forever, with whom he began his career in 74. He went on to record three albums with the band before launching his own career two years later, a solo career. Casino is Aldo Miola's third solo album. Uh, it was released on February 25th, 1978. That would be my sixth birthday. <laughs> Second album we've, that's been released on my birthday. The other one was Vulgar Display. Interesting combination. Oh, wow. there. That is a good. I, I think a mashup needs to be done. <laughs> on Columbia Records, produced by Aldo Miola and features Aldo Miola on guitar, mandolin, percussion, and hand claps, Barry Miles on keyboards and percussion, Anthony Jackson on bass guitar, Steve Gadd on drums, Eddie, Col Eddie Colon on percussion, and Mingo Lewis on percussion. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our reviews for copyright reasons, but down in the description, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our blog at johnandscotto.com, you'll find links to Casino on Spotify and YouTube so you can follow along if you'd like. On to track one, Egyptian Danza. I like the organ that opens this. I like the idea, but I think it's, it's a far... Hmm? It's very, like, early Pink Floyd. I mean... It had to have been a throwback even at this mm -hmm. time. Yeah. I mean, I think it's that's... a Farfisa, which is kind of like an early synthesizer, electric yeah. organ. It would have worked better, I think, if they went with like a pipe organ or a B3. It's like what Rich Wright used, like, I mean, during the Sid Barrett days yeah. going up into uh, right. even Saucer Full of Secrets, I would the, say. The Farfisa was very popular in the 60s. It was like one of the first yeah. early uh, electric organs. But it's kind of dark and moody, and I just think it would have worked better on go full Bach and bring in a pipe organ, or or like bring a more rock edge with a B three, a Hammond B three. Um, but after I that, think yes, kind of went there with the whole pipe organ. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember which album that was where Wakeman just like went to some church to record right. his parts. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because back in the days before synthesizers, that's what you had to do if you wanted a pipe organ. Because yeah. you weren't going to find a pipe organ in a studio. You were going to find no. a Farfisa or a B3. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you want a pipe organ, you're going to a church. But, you know, before there were synthesizers that could, you know, reproduce one. But after... So it was a, definitely a conscious choice to do this, though, you know, to, to take that sound. They could have done oh, yeah. a lot of different things. Oh, yeah. It starts with this weird organ, and then it cuts yeah. right to the riff. Wastes no time. Love the syncopation, love all the stabs from the keys in the rhythm section and the A section. Um, nice sudden change at um, 148. Just goes to this slower kind of Latin groove. Love... It's very Zappa feel to it, doesn't it? A little bit of a Zappa feel, yeah. Ah, um, oh, that whole jingly, you know, kind <laughs> of <laughs> stabs and all that, yeah. The thing that... I, the th and I didn't notice this until over the last week I've been on a bit of a fusion binge. Uh, to prep for this, um, and I've noticed I, I love I've loved Al ever since I was a kid. Uh, my oldest brother introduced me to him in around eighty six, eighty seven, shortly after I started playing guitar. Been a fan ever since. I just noticed one of his, uh, well, I think one of his big influences, Santana. Yeah, you, he you reminds me a lot of Santana. Reminds me a lot of Santana, um, but. In that slower kind of Latin section, I love the, just his beautiful crystalline tone. And I love how it picks up at 202 and then just gets progressively faster and faster. Uh, this track in particular actually reminds me a lot of Steve Packett's mm -hmm. uh, early solo work. Okay. You know, like uh, Voyage of the Acolyte, which was a couple of years before this. Okay. But uh, uh, just about showing off the guitar with yeah. the other musicians you know playing underneath and that's really what what that was about because he right. was so tired of being in the background mm -hmm. of genesis that he needed to do something that really showcased his skills for a change right i was wondering about hackett because i hear a lot of santana i hear a lot of steve howitt points and i know they they were at 60s so he they could have been an influence on him 
When did Hackett start with Genesis? Uh, he started in 71. Okay, because Al joined Return to Forever in 74, already had this sound. So I don't know if he Hackett necessarily would have been an influence. He could have borrowed a little bit here and there, though. Um, but the way it picks up, it, it's very, um, it's very come on, Eileen. It's just, you know, it just repeats over and over again and just gets faster and faster. Um, love the lead guitar on the right at 3.30. It just kind of sticks out in the mix because it kind of hits you in the head. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of that where it's just, you know, laying low and then jumping out at you yeah. kind of thing. There's this keyboard lead around four minutes. You hear it in the right ear and then you hear another bit of it in the left ear. Loved that little trick. Um, I I've always loved Al because he can definitely shred, but he most of the time he keeps it melodic. Yeah. And he doesn't show off too much. Um, he shreds so briefly, you know, you're just yeah. like, and then he just, it's gone. <laughs> you're like, oh, come on. Well, like I said last week, <laughs> that's what I like. You know, show me you can do it and then back off and play a melody. <laughs> but I love this sort of nice, soft Middle Eastern fade. It just, you know, it gets kind of weird sounding and soft in the fade and gets a little Middle Eastern. I love that. On to track two, Chasing the Voodoo. This one was composed by percussionist Mingo Lewis, who incidentally played with Santana. Yeah. So there's that connection there. Um, love all the percussion on this one. It's, it's, I mean, it's written by a percussionist, so it's always loaded with percussion. Um love the syncopation in the bass line love how the that bass line just kind of fades in you know after this wall of percussion um yeah i really like this one a lot mm -hmm. the, the the bass on is just amazing yeah uh, just the things he's he's pulling together here mm -hmm. you know anthony the rock and, and mediterranean yeah. sound and anthony jackson the bass this bassist is amazing plays on most of all stuff um love how the i think it's a marimba follows the guitar you have both of them playing the melody most of the song. Yeah. Um, and then around 135, it just so suddenly softens, just briefly, just to build back up to this yeah. nice, insistent groove. And there's this kind of like synth effect on the guitar during the solo. It blends really well because he's kind of trading off with the keyboard player. You know, Al, would, Al plays a bit of a solo, and then the keyboard plays a bit of a solo. And then a percussion solo comes in, and then back to the guitar, then back to the keyboard, then back to the percussion. Now, I like the keyboards on this, but I am curious about the, the album we were going to do originally by him, uh, Elegant mm. Gypsy, because, uh. you know, that, that had Jan Hammer yeah. on it. And I'm kind of curious to hear how the two of them play together. Al and Jan had played on like all of I think most most of his first five or four or five albums Jan was on, Jan played on. Um, it got interesting because toward the end scenario, which I was also considering, it gets very Miami Vice. <laughs> well, of course, if it's the eighties, <laughs> it was eighty three. Excuse me. Um, yeah. The only reason I was considering is because I, I had read that Phil Collins, uh, Bill Bruford, and Tony Levin play on it, but. It turns out they only Scenario. play on, like, Collins plays on one track, Levin and Bruford play on another. The rest of it is just Al and Jan, and it's very, very 80s. Um, on the first I'm one... I think if... Or, I guess Levin and Collins played together in a few Peter Gabriel's tracks. Okay. But, uh, it's yeah. It's separate tracks, I unfortunately. I, I was under the impression that they'd played on the entire album, in which case I was going to review it. I also love that album. It's just very nostalgic for me. Um, yeah. Elvin and Gypsy... Very much the same sound. Um, Jan came from jazz, so he's a jazz yeah. he's a jazz keyboard player. You don't get those traces of the the typical Jan Hammer sound until a little later. Okay. Um, on to track three, Dark Eye Tango. This is a ballad, which was a nice change of pace at this point. Yeah, you know, we had two burners coming in. Um, love the guitar tone, nice emotive melody. Nice interplay between the guitar and the keyboards around one minute. Um, him and Alan Barry Miles play together a lot on the album. I like that. The rhythm, I think, is a little too much of its time. It's that like 70s it... Latin thing. <laughs> I like how it changes up, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, you pretty much get taken around the world. Yeah. You know, Latin flair, the 
Eastern European to African and just straight up American mm-hmm. rock right. all at the same time. Yeah, well, pick... not at the same time, but right. they, they flow into each other right. pretty easily. Yeah, it picks up nicely at 138 to this great kind of Latinish groove. Love the bass tone. Uh, and this is a bass geek thing, guitar geek thing, but um, Anthony Jackson uses active pickups. Basically, they use a battery to boost the output of the pickup. Um, they also sound a bit compressed. I'm not normally a fan, especially on guitar. They, they're used on guitar, too. They're popular in certain genres of metal. But here it kind of works. That compressed tone kind of works for me. Um, also love how it gets a bit loud around three minutes into this great bombastic riff. Like he goes full rock for a little bit. Right, yes. For like 30 seconds. Uh, great staccato leads around 3.30. That's his trademark. That's, that's staccato playing. Um, and the end, end solo, I think, maybe goes on a little too long. You know. Um, Is this your pick for weakest? No, no, no. Um, it was originally um, mm. until we got to another track that is definitely my pick for weakest. Um, <laughs> on to track three, Senor Mouse. This one was composed by Chick Corea, keyboardist and band leader from Return to Forever, Al's previous band. Love the heavy syncopated bass and percussion and a more great interplay between the keys and guitar. Really interesting keyboarding. Really interesting keyboard sound around 35 seconds. Um, Definitely. Love the dramatic section that comes in about 130. And then the A section comes back. It gets a little bit repetitive. Um, the change around 245 is very welcome. This one almost had my pick for weakest. Like, Well, probably in the first listen. Uh-huh. I, I wasn't impressed with it. Yeah. But as it, it's warmed up to me, definitely on uh, repeated listens. Yeah, same for, uh, for me, because I was a little unsure about this one at first. This one and Dark Eye Tango were both a little eh at first. I got used and, to them. And, yeah, at first, I'm kind of like, oh, you got the same like African beat going mm-hmm. that, that you had in the last track. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute. That was the end of side one. Yeah, yeah. And this is the beginning of side two. Yeah, it ties so... them together. Maybe it makes sense that way. Yeah. Of course, in the days where, you know, CDs to streaming, where it just goes from one to the other, though, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, right. really, again? Mm-hmm. You know? But then we get this great off-kilter timing sec change in, in this section that comes in at around 4.30. Um, some slow tremolo picking it at 5.09. Uh, um, love how the keyboard drops out to accentuate the guitar. And it just develops into this nice, short, blistering solo. Yeah, it winds up having this epic feel that that kind of works, you know, know. When, you, <laughs> when you think about it. Because so, at first it's kind of like, ah, oh, okay, you're just going to do the soft part for all this time hmm. and then build back again. But I don't know, maybe this is the, the when he really pulls it off. Yeah. I mean, the beginning is kind of like this weird Frankie Valley sort of <laughs> vibe going to it, which yeah. I'm kind of like, really? <laughs> but... Then around six minutes, the guitar and the keyboards harmonize. I like that. Um, yeah. And the I love how the, sec, the A section is so much louder when it comes back. It kind of briefly comes back at the end. And it's just way louder, more more intense. And then we get this nice chaotic bit right at the end. Yeah. <laughs> where they're just kind of playing off of each other for no reason. Or just, you know, without me, you know, really uncomposed. For a piece written by a keyboard player, I think he, he made made it into a nice guitar piece. Um, <laughs> now on to track five, Fantasia Suite for two guitars. Um, this is made up of four sections, Viva La Danza Arena, Guitars of the Ex- Exotic Isle, Rhapsody Italia, and Bravoto Fantasia. Um, if Al wasn't Italian, I'd be kind of wondering about some of those, <laughs> those words. Um, I mean, it's... A sweet in five minutes, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is my <laughs> you favorite. You can't really, you can't really take tell the sections apart, though. I mean, I'm guessing there are in a some few spots. differentiating. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing in a few spots. Um, <laughs> I've everything on this track is out. All the guitars and all the percussion. Yeah. Um, and it was really cool to hear some acoustic work finally. Yeah. I, mean, I don't. I feel like we really didn't get that all and, that much before and this. And it starts kind of fast and pretty which is not a combination you get a lot. You know, 
if players go fast, it's not pretty. You know, they, um, and I love how the percussion kind of gradually comes in and, into, and there are these great harmonized fast runs. Um, I'm guessing where the next section starts, um, Exotic Isle. Because <laughs> there aren't clear demarcations. I'm just kind of going where, guessing from like where the general motif changes. Um, the second I mean, section... I only picked a change in like, I think there was a one at three minutes mm -hmm. in. Yeah. But I other th than that... Well, it gets the next section is a drastic difference, but I'm, I'm guessing yeah. it kind of changed. The theme kind of changed the motif, and f f so I'm guessing he went on to the next section. This next section reminds me a lot of Steve Howe from Yes. Yeah, you know, his electric playing doesn't remind me of Howe, but his acoustic playing definitely does. Um, gets a bit moody, but it's still pretty. Love how the guitars harmonize. And then around, like you said, three minutes, we get to what I'm guessing is Rhapsody Italia. It's just this short section of a tremolo-picked mandolin. I'm guessing that's the mandolin on the album. Um, <laughs> backed by these kind of slow arpeggios. Short, moody, has kind of a drowning feel. It's just this odd section that's kind of thrown in until we come back to the last section, Bravoda Fantasia. Again, guessing again where this starts. We get some nice triumphant-sounding chords first with some nice you know fast harmonized runs um also sounds very how to me um love the fast percussion this nice uplifting melody love the little quick bursts of speed it's just really all showing off on an acoustic for a while yeah you know just a nice change of pace some really beautiful playing and some great you know percussion done by al on to track six the last track casino this is the worst for my weakest because it's just long and meandering. <laughs> yes, exactly. Longest uh, track at like nine and change. And it's funny. Wasn't that the thing last week you liked the, the yeah, longest? Yeah, ironically. My favorite was the <laughs> longest track on that one. My weakest is the longest. Because it was one. the longest. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I'm a prog guy. I like epic songs. Um, I think a lot of this, a lot of the, the backing music sounds like stuff from emerson lake and palmer mm -hmm. but yeah this one just i mean it feels lost <laughs> yeah yeah do you like the drums at the very beginnings so they sound very 80s a little ahead of their time it starts off the most rock on the album it's it's got this you know aggressive riff a lot of bombast to it the band drops out for these nice punctuations on the get uh, on the stat you know with these stabs just to accentuate the guitar there's this i dramatic... felt he did rock better like uh earlier on like oh, yeah. in dark eye tango mm. or um uh chasing the voodoo right but here the first three minutes to me kind of felt like he was just clearing his throat sort of you know <laughs> he's kind of setting the stage a little bit and uh -huh. and, it, and it's okay to do that yeah but you gotta go somewhere with it. <laughs> and then around, um, I guess around a little after a minute, it slows to this, you know, kind of Latin beat that we've heard a bunch of times and we're back to normal right. Al. And I mean, the guitar and the keyboard again, great interplay, nice intense solo at three minutes. Um, love the way he plays with the timing in the solo. Um, that Love how that, that Latin section fades a bit and, and at 4.30 before developing. Got a little bored around um, 5.20. Um, yes. <laughs> we get into this slower section. Um, it picks up a little bit, but then it got slow again. Yeah. It's just too long. Um, nice drastic pickup at uh, 7.28. Very welcome. Um, Exa yeah, right. This gets interesting again. Mm -hmm. I have my notes around 7.5. Yeah. And there's a section around 8 minutes that reminds me a lot of Yes. Great syncopation at the end. That It's just... To quote Genesis, alive at both <laughs> ends, but a little dead in the middle. <laughs> um, so, do you recommend it? I do. I think it's one. I, I don't. It's not as strongly as last week's. I mm -hmm. feel, but because uh, I feel this is a bit more academic than uh -huh. than kind of you know. Well, last week was improvised. Yeah, yeah, and, that that was exciting. And. And last week, um, Bozo Love and Stevens, it's three basically rock guys yeah. playing improvised music. This is a bunch of jazz guys playing improvised music. But he, he does have a guitar clinic that, that I definitely would recommend, mm. you know, if you want to listen to some 
a, a great oh, yeah. guitar player. Al is a genius. Um, and I return to Forever very much in the same vein. Um, but you've got Stanley Clark, Chick Corea, and Lenny White, three of the greatest musicians on the planet. Um, along I kind of wish they had gotten him for Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, you know? I yeah. mean, they really needed a lead guitar player mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And it would have been interesting for he him would have to have played nicely. against Emerson. Yeah, he would have fit very What's nicely. That? He would have fit in any LP very nicely. Um, right. Like, as I mentioned, I've been on a bit of a fusion kick this past week um, to pre- prepare for this, listen to a lot of Return to Forever, a lot of Mahavishnu Orchestra, which is much more rock. If you're looking for more of that sort of thing, you might be interested. A lot of Weather Report, which I'm kind of dipping into. Um, Jaco Pastorius, the bassist, is the best known thing to come out of that band. Um, but uh, did, uh, Chester Thompson come out of them too? I was just going to mention that their album Black Market, Chester plays up drums on most of it. It's yeah. much more R and B than rock. I think you might like it. Huh. Um, still all instrumental, a lot of showing off, but leads a little more R and B than rock. They didn't have a guitar player. Uh, Joseph Wonfold, the keyboardist, played guitar a little bit, but it was mostly just keys, sax, drums, bass. Um, and yeah, Chester plays on that album. Of course, Chester's brilliant. Yeah. Um, and that's it for of course i recommend it highly i've been an owl fan since yeah. you know i was a teenager um he's amazing uh that's it for casino we're off next week for thanksgiving here in the u.s so until december when we'll be reviewing we'll be reviewing the yes album by yes their nice. albums were not creatively titled <laughs> <laughs> the yes album yes songs uh well <laughs> they had some they had some titles that didn't make any sense either, like Relayer right. or uh, <laughs> I'm some of the other ones. Oh, oh, Tales from Topographical right. Oceans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inclined to think it was chemical, but I don't know. John Anderson's always just kind of been that way. <laughs> <laughs> and Bruford hated it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest thing about the whole <laughs> thing. Uh-huh. Just like, what is this bullshit? <laughs> Like, literally, that's what he would say. And we'll get into this more next week, but I, I kind of got the impression you had Anderson and Howe kind of on the hippy-dippy side. Yeah. Bruford and Squire kind of on the more, like, straightforward rock side. And the keyboard player was kind of a wild card, depending on when you catch them. Um, well, right, because Wakeman wasn't there for as long as we, you know, like, you right. think. He wasn't the <laughs> original. Know? Right, he kind of popped in for like a couple albums and then yeah. was gone. Um, they've been through a lot of keyboard players. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, and I mean, Wakeman was his own show. Yeah. Wakeman was just the showman. Anyway, more on that next week. Until then, of course, always no, remember... No, no, two weeks. Two weeks from now, sorry. Until then, of course, Happy always remember... Never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. Happy there you Thanksgiving. Are.